a good night. Pastor, I gotta hug your neck. I've been sitting here waiting for you to not be busy and I hadn't hugged your neck. I had to hug your neck. Oh, I'm not I'm like Pastor. Last Wednesday. This is a normal Wednesday thing. We're not gonna hook up there. All right. So that's what we're gonna do from now on on Wednesdays. That's your job. On Wednesdays you don't put this on until you talk for a few minutes. All right. Glad everybody showed up tonight. It's gonna be a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh I know that if the pastor was up here, he would say thank you to the helps ministry, to all you guys that prepared the food, the, those that are taking care of the kids, all that kind of stuff. We, uh, we thank you for that. We've got a real special night lined up tonight. We've uh, been working on some things, uh, especially the praise team. And so we want to start off with a prayer before we do anything, of course. Uh, Miss Layla with black hair. We have to say Layla with black hair because we also have Layla with, bl with blonde hair. Say nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, everybody would bow your heads, please. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. Uh, I just like to thank you for Heath and Haley and all the youth here, Lord. And I just like to thank, um, say that whatever Heath has to bring to us today, Lord, that we just accept it and mm -hmm. take it in and take it with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good day, Haley. Haley may have something to say. I just want to. Whoa. Well, hello. Hi. Whoa, whoa. It's hot. Yeah, it's hot. I just want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you all for the support that you give to Renovate Youth Church and to Heath and I. Um, without you guys, it would not be possible to do what we do. Um, I want to remind everybody that camp is coming up. It's $130 per camper. We're going to have some de uh, deadlines that we have to meet in June. Right, I think June, yeah, June. Um, so please watch Facebook for those. Um, this year is is kind of different. We have so many kids, glory to God, and um, we have accelerated. So um, we are going to be. I'm going to be making sure that once I get a, my dashboard where everybody can go and sign up, I'm going to be uh, posting that on Facebook. I need all you parents to please go in there and register your kids that are going, and. Um, we are going to be really crunched for numbers, you know, this year because of we just have to make sure that we have enough leaders for, it used to not be a problem when we first went, you know, we had more leaders than youth, I think, but, um, but we, we have to have a certain amount of adults per uh, group of kids, per 10 kids. So I just need everybody to be confident if you're going because we have to pay, if you sign up and you pay, there are no refunds. Um, and there's no late signups, and I cannot stress that enough. We've allowed late signups before, but with the, the group that we have now, that's not going to be possible. So I just really need everybody to work with me on that. And just please understand, if you come to me late and you give me a really sad face, I'm going to have to give you a really sad face back because it's just not going to be possible um, this year. So um, I think that's all I have to say. Friday night. Friday night is our youth karaoke night, guys. Yeah. This is our... This is our biggest, it's the only fundraiser that Renovate does, um, and it's just a good time to come together um, and just, um, just fellowship and enjoy one another, and this Friday we are going to be serving, uh, our own Ryan Powell is going to be uh, smoking pork, pulled pork. Pull, pull, pull pork, so we're going to do pulled pork sandwiches and pulled pork nachos will be on the menu this week. So, yeah, it's going to be a great time. We're excited to that he's back in his house and got his grill going. So we're excited about that. So if you will all please join us Friday um, and just support these kids. We, we are believing that every child will have a scholarship to go to camp. Uh, we, we have believed that every year, and God has never failed us, and I know he won't do it this year. So, um, But it takes all of us, and if you don't have uh, enough for the whole thing, just so into what you can because the whole lump is blessed. And just we just we thank you each and every one of you for all that you do. All right. All right, for our, our our praise and worship, we we like to Pastor Hout likes to have the youth come up during praise and worship on Sunday mornings, and we've got a few more here than is normally here on Sunday morning. So we're gonna we're gonna crowd the front here, and we want to when we get started, we're gonna say if you want to come up and get a part of this and. Get up here and worship with us next to the stage. Please join in. We, it's, you don't have to sit in a pew. All right? So youth, come on. Let's go. Mo, take it. Yes, everybody, let's get to our feet. Let's get ready to give God some praise and some glory that he's so deserving of. 
Something I like to do with the youth when we start praise and worship, let's all get one thing in the forefront of our mind that we know we can be thankful to God for. Just get that right in the forefront of your mind. And I want you to think about that while you give him praise. So let's all get on our feet. Let's be bold and praise our heavenly faithful Father.
brought me out with him.
Give him praise and give him the glory that he's so deserving of. It takes us a second. It takes us a second to get there. Crystal? Crystal? Come here, baby. Get a little tender. <laughs> get a little tender. Oh, what a... What a good, good, good time. What a good time. This is Crystal. Crystal's been coming to renovate for a little while now. And uh, I asked uh, the youth if there would be anybody that would want to give a testimony. And uh, Crystal volunteered. She took notes. <laughs> she didn't want to forget something. She came to me. She came to me and she said, how long do I have? <laughs> I was like, well, how long do you need? And she's like, well, I don't need an hour or 30 minutes or nothing like that. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's try to keep it five to ten minutes then. <laughs> so, but she took notes, and we're just going to turn it over and let the Spirit do what the Spirit's going to do with her. How is everybody tonight? Okay. Oh, that's sweet of you. Okay. I want to start with that I'm very grateful to be here, and I'm grateful for you guys to be here. Um, I want to thank Jesus for letting all of us to be here and gather Amen. and praise him. Amen. Um, I want to start off with, I, I'm just going to start off when I was little, okay? Um, when I was little, uh, I didn't have everything a normal, I guess you would say normal child would have. Um, I grew up in the most uh, poorest part of the town and I, um, I moved from here and there and um, there was just a lot of moving. Um, my dad and my mom got a divorce when I was a little baby and um, my mom was never in my life to show me or to lead me in the right path. And um, so I was with my dad at the, about the age of five. And um, he raised us to be strong and to know how to kind of know what to do for yourself and just kind of raise yourself and so I didn't grow up so what's the word easy um, I found out when I was young that my dad was on drugs um, he did drugs since he was a teenager he'd been on them for his whole life um, you know it's not so easy being young and finding out that your parent either sells drugs or is in the room locked up and just getting high or drinking and um, so it started when I was really little um, you know when you're a young child you try to be like your mom or dad and you just, you learn by their ways, and I learned, you know, I learned drugs, and I learned not the right things, and he was, we were always running, he was always doing something bad, so he was always running from the police, you know, and we always had to watch over our backs, and that's just how I grew up, and how I had to live, so, um, I got abused physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, physically, it was hard, and mentally, I didn't have the right state of mind, and um, emotionally, I just had to talk to myself and get myself through things that 
you wouldn't think a young child would make their self go through. And so um, I did that and, bye, sorry. age of 11, I went down the wrong path. Um, I started smoking marijuana because um, that's all I knew. Uh, that's how I numbed my pain and that's how I got through things and that's just how I, I, I had to numb everything because I just wasn't emotionally stable and um, by that age, you know, I didn't know how a teenager was supposed to grow up or how a kid was supposed to grow up or I didn't have that parent to show me the right thing. So I just had to survive on my own and figure out what's right and wrong. And um, so around that age, you know, a lot of bad stuff happened. Um, I didn't, I questioned God, I, I will admit. I did question God. and. I asked myself, is he really there? Because all this bad stuff is happening and I've been praying to him, I've been talking to him and all this stuff is just, it, it, bad things just keep happening. And I questioned him and you know, life, life got tougher and life went on. Um, let's see. So I grew up in like those apartments that you pay like $20 for rent. Uh, yeah, I lived in those. Um, you know, I didn't have the best clothes. I didn't have name brand clothes like a lot of kids are blessed with. I did not have the necessities I needed. Um, there is I was 15, 14, around there. Um, we did not have running water. We did not have a sink. We did not have a toilet. We barely had a bathtub. Um, and that's when my life went downhill really bad. Um, I just did not care. But one thing I did care about is school. and. School was just my way of getting out, and it's. I, was, I always told myself, I'm gonna do good in school because when I grow up, I'm not gonna live like this, and I'm gonna bring myself up, and I'm gonna do better for me. So I always did good in school, and I still do good in school. Um, that was my number one priority, but you know, I was that girl that. She was just quiet, but she was mean. Like you knew not to mess with her. And you know, everybody says, oh, you look mad and this and that. And I really, I'm really not, once you get to know me. Um, I may look mean or something, but I'm really not. Um, it's just, I had to stick up for myself and I had to survive and just let people know that, you know, times were rough and just wasn't the right time to mess with me, and so I, I just got used to that. And um, I used to fight a lot, didn't care about anything. I just, somebody said the wrong thing to me, I'd just fight them, and it was, it was pretty bad. Um, I got involved with my brother's gang stuff, and you know, guns and knives, and just, it was pretty bad. And um, Hold on. So around 14, I got put into the system, the foster care system, um, because my father had sexually abused me. Um, and it was, 
it was really just a quick thing because, you know, um, I got pulled out of the house with the clothes on my back and with flip flops and I had barely woken up and then just got pulled out of the house and so I got put into the system and um, I moved like about two hours away. I lived in Sweetwater, Texas. Um, and I moved to Cross Plains um, to get into foster care. And once I got into foster care, I had to stop, you know, I had to stop smoking, I had to stop fighting, or else you'd go to an RTC, which is not a good thing. It's really restricted, and I didn't want to go there. So I had to stop all my bad habits, and um, I, you know how they say fake it till you make it? Well, I had to fake it a little bit, and sooner or later, when you fake it enough, it becomes a habit for you, and you learn from that. And so I started getting myself together, and um, I started doing good. And you know, as soon as they put me in the um, the foster home, they put me on medication. Because once you go into foster care, you know, they only hear the bad stuff that you went through. And so they immediately think, oh, she's depressed, or oh, she has anxiety, or oh, she's suicidal. And um, so they put me on medication. And so life just went on. And there was this one time I went to church camp, and it was in Eastland. And, you know, I didn't really want to go. I wasn't really interested. And um, my foster parents kind of made me go. So I went. And um, uh, towards the end, like the very last day of camp, we were just sitting there. And the pastor, he comes to me and he's like, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I was like, mm, I don't think so. And he goes, well, why not? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, what are you waiting for? I'm like, I don't know. And so um, he, he sat there with me and we talked. And he's like, well, we can, we can accept him right now, right here, right now. And there was a dodgeball game going on. You know, all the kids were playing and we were just sitting and watching. Uh, we did it right there and we just prayed right there and talked and and when I got back home uh, that Sunday morning or whatever, when we went to church, um, I got baptized. And um, it, was, it was pretty great. It, that's when I knew that I was ready and that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And since then, I have been a believer and I have accepted Jesus into my life. And that was a different home I was in. Um, I'm in a new home now. Um, I'm fixing to get adopted, if nobody knew. <laughs> yeah, so um, fixing to get adopted and I have come so far from everything that I've been through. Um, I always get told, oh, you're so strong, and you know, you've come from so little, and you've overcome all that, and I really have, and you know, it's a hard thing for young ladies to come up from that and to build their self from that, but I, for me, it's, it was not that hard. I just try to look on the bright side, and I really want to do better for myself, so I build for myself. And coming to Renovate Youth Church has changed my life. And I know that sounds cliche or, or something, but it really has because I've built 
a family, I built friendships, and you know, um, Elise, she invited me, and she's like, well, actually her mom did, and so she's like, you should go to that church, you know, it's fun, and at first I was a little iffy, I was like, hmm, I don't know, so I went, and it was pretty great, um, and I've been coming ever since, and I've grown so much closer to God since I've come to this church. It it really has opened my eyes more, and I I no longer have those moments with God. I have a relationship with Him. So I want to thank all of Renovate Youth Group Church, whatever you want to call it. I want to thank you guys for being there and for just coming to church and being a part of my family and my friends. So thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to sing one more song before we take up tithe and offering. That was. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do. All right, Mo, if you wouldn't mind leaving us for one more song for tithe. It's all right with everybody. I just feel like to go back to that same song we just did. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Everybody, if you're not standing, let's honor God and stand for him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. What am I doing? This is Matthew, everyone. Let's give him a big hand. He is so awesome. He's so talented. He, do you mind? Hey guys, um, so I have the opportunity to play uh, tonight, and I haven't played violin for about six years-ish, so but never know where's, a, <laughs> oh, where's a better place to start um, than at a church, yes ma'am. So I'm originally from Indonesia, and so this is my 10th year being here. I'm a current uh, student at Heart Pain, so yeah, thank you for having me tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He's awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship him, y'all. The same song.
Joshua. Joshua! For those of you who have a Bible, I'm going to be in Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, 10. It says, this is in the Passion, For God the faithful one is not unfair. How can you forget the beautiful work that you have done for him? He remembers the love you demonstrate as you continually serve his beloved ones. I didn't even intend to... I, I looked at the Greek on the bottom of the footnotes and it says those of you who those of you as you continually serve it's li- the Greek is talking about financial sowing and uh, the Lord led me for this scripture to to minister over and I didn't even know that which was really cool but verse 11 says but we long to see you passionately advance until the end and you find your hope fulfilled. So don't allow your hearts to grow dull or lose your enthusiasm, but follow the example of those who fully received what God has promised because of their strong faith and patient endurance. Another uh, a thought I had was, um, you see, I'm not trying to talk about people badly, but there are some people who complain about this, let's say uh, there's the streets are terrible, but yet they don't pay their taxes. Come on. In the same, <laughs> why would you complain if you're not doing your tithes and offering? But there's something different. You won't be complaining because God is faithful. This verse I just read, He is the faithful one. His desire for you is prosperity. He delights in the prosperity of his servant. So why would he tell you to tithe? Because he wants to bless you. Yes, come on. And one thing I wanted to say is we had a a tithing offering about three or four weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And the youth, the youth totaled in tithe in one week, $106. We just, we nearly paid for a camp supplying our own needs, not even through, through um, a fundraiser. This, I mean, we're, our youth are learning about how to give and how to receive, yes, and it's proved faithful. Yes, so ushers, would you please come forward? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for for today. Thank you for the ability to tithe and to offer. I pray that we are just sensitive, sensitive through this week. If you were to lead us to to sow in anyone's life, Lord, we know that as we release that, there's a blessing on and a return. I thank you, Lord. We live for you and we give for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Give me a chair. Yeah, give me a chair from up there. <laughs> All right. So we we actually have something very special that we've been working on. I have been waiting. I have been waiting for four months for this. And I have been waiting patiently for four months for this. But it happens to actually fall at a very good time because this happens to fall close to Pastor's birthday. Pastor? (laughs) Pastor? If you wouldn't mind, would you please come up here and have a seat? This is for your birthday. all for you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Can you play a C, Caleb? Perfect. Nailed it.
So be it. Amen. Pastor, as the as the kids are going back to their seat, I wanted to I wanted to say a blessing over you as well. And basically, I'm going to be doing this the same one. But I looked through so many translations over that exact scripture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just wanted you to. I wanted you to be a part of a part of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this blessing over you, the same one, but I'm gonna say it a little differently. And then Titus is actually gonna pray over you. Okay. <laughs> May God bless Jason Stuttered, my pastor. May God keep you, Jason Stutter. Thank you, Lord. My pastor. Thank you. May God smile on you. Thank you, Jesus. Jason Stutter. Yes. And may God gift you. Thank you, Lord. Jason Stutter. May God look you, Jason Stutter, full in the face. Yes. And may God make you prosper. Thank you, Jason Lord. Stutter. I love you, sir. I love you, sir. I receive it. Thank you for your love. Well, Father God, we come to you right now, God. We just give you praise and glory to your name, God. God, we thank you for blessing us, Lord God, with your man, Lord God. The man that you gave authority, Lord God, to preach your word, Lord God. God, we just ask that you just bless him right now, God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Yes. God, give him the wisdom, Lord God, to lead his flock, Lord God, your flock of people, Lord God, that we may come to worship your holy name, God. God, just give him the strength, Lord God. God, we thank you for everything you're doing in his life right now, Lord God. Everything that he touched, everything that he speaks, Lord God, will give you glory to your name, God. God, we just, we just thank you, Lord God. When you lift up our pastor to you right now, God, the head of this household, Lord God. God, we thank you for him right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'll grab my table over here. Yes, sir, please. <laughs> Titus here, help me out. Why, why y'all getting that set up for you? I just want to tell all y'all thank you for being here. And uh, you're our life. You really are. You're our, you're our whole world. And uh, I want to tell all the youth how much I appreciate y'all being here. And uh, you're our future. You know that? Do you know that? You don't know that. Okay. <laughs> You need to know that. You're the future, you know. No one single generation ever had it all. That's right. There's still not been one generation that got it all. It's this generation learned this, and they taught this generation. And that generation took what that generation taught them and what the Lord took them and taught them. And, and then that next generation took what that generation, that that generation taught them and them too taught that plus what the Lord grew and developed in them. And we've been doing this since, huh? Since Abraham's day. And no one single generation to this day has ever captured it all because it's God we're talking about. He's inexhaustible. And so as, as we're all growing in these things and we, 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 we take from different anointings, you know, I'm pu I p pulled, and many of you have, but I'm speaking for me, I pulled from Pastor Ken's anointing, and he pulled from Brother Bernie and Brother Copeland and Brother Osteen and Brother Hagen and Brother Norval and all these people, T.L. Uh, Osborne, all these people, and, then, and, and mainly from his grandmother who pulled and was ministering to Amy Simple McPherson. <laughs> And she's pulling from the, but th this is a heritage thing that we're talking about. You see what I'm saying? And so I just want to tell you how it, 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 it's an honor that we can, that we can uh, impact one another's lives for good. And only by the word and by the spirit can we do that. But I thank each and every one of y'all for being here. And, and I wish I had known what you know at your age. 
And I promise you, every adult that's got any lick of sense in them would tell you the same thing. And you'll never, ever, ever regret doing it God's way. I promise you that. And I commend you. I bless you. And I pray the Lord cause and continue to cause his face to shine on you. And the Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord keep you, shamar, and hedge you in as with thorns. That no weapon formed against you would ever be able to prosper. And no evil can come near your dwelling. Huh? I bless you in the name of Jesus. And you know what? Last thing. I, I've been in the, God's had me and uh, I got blessed with a new Bible. And anytime you get a new Bible, you, boy, oof. Nothing like a new Bible. Because <laughs> you start at Genesis 1 1 and it's, you get a whole new refresher course. And I'm up to the end of 2 Samuel now, just every word reading it. You see something new every time because, you know, if you, if you get a new Bible or wear a Bible out in a year or two years, whatever, well, you, you start all over and you've you, you got two years of growth or a year of growth, a year of revelation updated. And so you see things in a whole new light. And I just want to encourage you in this, and then I'll, I'll turn it over. That same God of in the Old Testament, same God we serve today, okay? The covenant shifted because there's a new covenant representative named Jesus, okay? And his blood, and he is the mercy seat, he is the new covenant, and the new covenant in the person of the Holy Spirit lives in you. You're not under a covenant, you're in a covenant, and the new covenant is a person, it lives in you by the Spirit. But this is what I wanna encourage you on. That same God, y'all, if they just loved God and obeyed God the best they could, and God knew they was gonna mess up. That's why before he even allowed the death angel to come through, the first thing he instituted before it was Passover. God always made provision for his people. Before he allowed the death angel to go in on that cursed thing, he said, get Aaron and we're gonna institute the Passover. Take a lamb, shed its blood. All of you get in the house, paint the doorpost and the two side posts and stay in there and don't come out until I tell you to come out. He made provision for safety for his people. That same God that gave Joshua the victory every time they heard him and obeyed him, brought the people through the Red Sea. Not one of them lacked, not one of them died, not one of their feet were swollen. That's the same God you serve. I just want to encourage you, that same God of the fiery furnace delivery, that's the God you serve. And I guess I'm saying this, if your confession ain't perfect, God's bigger than your confession. Come on, can I just, can I just be real and just shoot it out like that? You know, when, when, when you've had a bad day and you, you might have messed up, God's bigger than the mess up. You see what I'm saying? He's the faithful God. He cut covenant with himself, not with you. You're in on the covenant because another one represents you and your faith is in the one that did live it right, not in your ability to live it right. Am I making any sense? And so I just want to encourage you that God's bigger than your flaws. We all got flaws. You know what? As long as we have a body, every one of us are flawed individuals. And you're around me long enough, you're going to see my flaws. If I'm around you long enough, I'm going to see your flaws. But the one that, the, the, the God we serve is flawless. And, 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 and that, I just want to encourage you that, 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 that he's the covenant God. He's the faithful God. And he's the all-powerful God. He blessed them people when they were just, I mean, practicing obedience. Man, he came off that mountain, they had made a gold calf. The high priest Aaron made a gold calf. The people didn't, Aaron did. They said, we, we don't know what's coming with this Moses. He ain't let us in on the plan. Well, he ain't supposed to let you in on the plan. They said, well, we well, just been up there too long. We want a God. And Aaron said, bring me your earrings and your rings. It was Aaron's idea. Says they brought it to him, and he, and then when Moses come down, chap, and started whooping that tail, Aaron said, "Hey," he said, "Listen, the people said they wanted a god. I took their rings and I threw it in this fire, and out popped this calf." <laughs> Moses said, "Oh, really?" And it says he ground it to powder, mixed it with water, and made every one of them, including Aaron, drink it. But I'm just saying that that the God of power, the God of, 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 of might. That's the God we serve. He's the faithful God and he still provided for them people, Heath. You know, I don't want the devil whooping anybody tonight because I messed up today or I still have this, this sin in my life. Listen to me, we all do. 
I didn't say we all practice sin, but the Bible says we, we walk in the light so that the sins we don't even know we've committed, the blood just keeps us cleansed. I mean, you don't even know you're doing it, and, and, but you're doing it, and the blood keeps you cleansed. And I just want to encourage you that God's bigger than your flaws. He's bigger than your past. He's bigger. He's, he's the faithful God. He's the covenant God. And thank you all for being here tonight. You can, you keep going. <laughs> we, we, can, we can go home. I won't keep you long. I, I, I'm not going to do that. Sweet service. It's, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a beautiful time, so we're definitely not going to mess it up at all. All right. I have a lot of notes. I've actually... Actually, I was going to minister this, this message um, in December, and, and the Lord took me to uh, the one on There's No Room in the Inn. Right before I was going to do this, I'd actually already had it prepared, and so it's been growing. It's been growing a lot. And, uh, um, and I know why it was growing the way it was doing, because in all actuality, the, the uh, last Thursday morning, Pastor was ministering he actually I listened to the Wednesday night service and he was one of the things he's ministering on that's exactly what I was I mean exactly to a T what I was going to minister on and so it was this is perfect I was like okay that's why we waited that's understandable all right hold them up I won't keep you long this is my Bible I am what it says I am and I can do what it says I can do Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. I, re I, I say in the name of Jesus, we're about to, I'm about to throw some seed, and it's going to land on good soil. Amen. Amen. Does everybody understand and know that we have, all have a default? Absolutely. We have a default. A d definition of a default is an automatic reaction that has been programmed into your human nature. Our default started way back when before we even were born. Our default started when the first Adam, the first Adam, decided to disobey and started the whole process of sin. In Psalms 51, 5 actually, Psalms 51, 5, it says that we are all birthed into a sin nature. So if we're all birthed into a sin nature, then we are... By human nature, we are, we are walking in sin. By human nature, we are. It's easy to sin because that's the world system. The, the prince of this world, that's the way he rules it, and so it's easy to do that. So we are, human nature, by birth default, is the world system that we live in, is sin. Now, I'm going to run through this real quick because it's because of a, uh, just going to give you a quick overview of it. We start learning our default at about six months years of age. I've done a lot of study on this in school and stuff. About six months of age, a child, a child cries when they're, they don't, they don't, under, they don't understand because they're not cognitive to learning yet. But when they start crying and then about six months, they start learning the process of I cry, someone comes. That's whenever you'll start seeing different things with small children is you'll think, well, the baby's crying. He's hungry or he's wet. And you get there and he's not. He's not wet. You try to give him a bottle. He don't want a bottle. He just wants attention. He has learned, I cry, somebody comes. That's the very first default that a person learns is they learn, I cry, somebody comes, which is, a, which is the root of manipulation. If you think about it, the very first thing we learn is manipulation. <laughs> and as, you, as, as a child, I mean, we, I, could, I, could, I, could, I could actually teach a whole lesson on this. I teach, not just, I'm talking about teach you on it. But a lesson on birth, from birth all the way through on the human nature, on how we learn and everything. But it all starts with the manipulation of crying. Okay? So we've got to establish that. Now, as a child grows, they learn from their parents. And they from, learn from the environment that they're in. They learn through training by the parents' words. So by 
training with words. No, don't do that. Here's how you do this. Or just learning by words. Uh, but they also learn by physical correction. As a parent, we all know that we have to physically correct our children sometimes. <laughs> Carter heard that. But more importantly, more importantly, we as parents teach, if you don't want to or not, it doesn't matter, this is not an option, but you teach by your actions. Absolutely. Role modeling is the most important thing, and that's a whole other thing that we'll, I'll go into some other day. It goes from the, what they're allowed to watch on TV yes. to who they're allowed to play with, who they're allowed to go over their house. They're learning the whole time. These kids are still learning at the age they're at. Yes. And their default is still learning. Praise the Lord that they come here and they're learning something other than the world system. And we'll, I'll go into that in a little bit too. All right, as we get older, as we get older and we're all responsible adults and we start making our own responsibility, we are totally responsible for the programming of our default. It's no longer my mama's responsibility for my default. It's mine. Okay? My time is already running real low. <laughs> so it's, it's very, very important what we put in here and what we put in here because that's where we learn. That's it. That's it. You don't, I don't learn like this what you are doing right now. If somebody's doing something, I, I can't see you. I can't hear you. I'm not learning. The only way I can learn is right here and right here. All right? So... The most important thing that we don't talk about, or we talk about it a bunch, but we don't realize, yes, we learn here, and we learn here, but the biggest way we learn is here. What comes out of your mouth is, when you, is what you're learning, because what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. So if you're somebody that does lots of cussing, and you're doing lots of stuff that you're not supposed to, by default... That's, what you're, that's what's here. That's your default. That's what you automatically go to. Now, there's a lot of people that might do some cussing, but they, don't, they, don't come, they, they might not come in the church house and they might not cuss inside the church house. That's actually not their default. That's still a choice they're doing. That their default is not to do it because they know when not to. All right, so human nature is programmed our default, and we program it all as we go along. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to answer to yourself. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to, I'm going to say some things, and I want you to really respond to yourself. I'm going to go through several of them um, on what your default reaction is to this to these situations. You're in your car, and somebody cuts you off. What's your default? Someone makes a smart comment to you. Someone tells you what to do. Someone bumps into you and doesn't say a word. Someone disrespects you. Someone blasts you on Facebook. Someone's talking about you. Someone wants to go out partying or to the bar and wants you to go. Someone just wants to go have fun and you know, what their, you know that their fun isn't right. What's your default? You smash your finger. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? You don't have enough money to pay your bills, much less to buy Christmas. What's your default? Is it to go charge up a bunch of credit cards? You wake up with a scratchy throat and cough. What's your default? What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? You get, you get a report from the doctor that isn't favorable. You have downtime at home. What's your default? What's the first thing you go to? Parents, when your children disobey, what's your default? Youth. When your parents ask you to do something, what's your default? You wake up on Sunday morning and you're tired. What's your default? You worked Wednesday and didn't have time to go home and change to make it to church. What's your default? When you're in church and during worship, you're just not feeling it. What's your default? Sunday evening, you're home and relaxing, and it's time to go to woman to woman. What's your default? <laughs> 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 
Wednesday night or Thursday morning, you know that you're supposed to go to the noble and you know that you're called to go there, but it, man, you're tired. What's your default? You get paid. What's your default? When extra money lands in your hand, what's your default? The thoughts of the sin, whatever the sin is for whoever it is, whatever it is you're battling and you've been battling since you got saved, when that thought comes in, what's your default? Does your default cause you to run late? Does your default cause you to eat more than you should? Does your default cause you to spend more money than you should or, or where you shouldn't? Does your default parents allow your kids to act in a way they shouldn't? Does your default youth have you acting a way you shouldn't? Does your default cause you to let people treat you a certain way because you want the attention? Does your default cause you to post things on social media? So, can an old dog be taught new tricks? I'm glad everybody said yes. I, was right. I, had, I had something for no. Because I was going to say, if you say no, then you're talking from your flesh. But nobody said no. We have been given, and we are continually given, the opportunity to reprogram our default every time we come through those doors. Every single time. We have the opportunity to grow. We have an opportunity to hear the word. We have an opportunity to start learning things and to make conscious decisions of what is wrong and right to change our default. But if you have to consciously change what your response is, being a physical response or a verbal response, you have to consciously change it. Because if you do not consciously change it, you go back to your default. Every time. Every single time you'll go back to your default, whatever your default is. Understand that default is always a choice. It's your default, but you still can choose to make the difference. The Bible is full of scriptures that, that teach us how to teach us what to do to change our default. In Matthew, it says that you deny yourself. And you can go into a big long study of what all that means, but it's talking about what you, your default is. You're denying whatever it is that you have here and you're doing what would be right for God. Default. In, in, in Isaiah, it talks about putting on garments of praise. That's a, is that a default to you when something happens? Do you praise? When negative happens, do you praise? No. What's your default? Those are just named a few. But all of it starts with loving Jesus more than you love whatever that is. Being money, being lying, being alcohol, pornography, being work, or even another person. Yes. If you're putting any of that before God, that's your default. Yes. Romans 13, 12 through 14. I want to read that real quick. My wife bought me a new Bible. I got it today. But this isn't it. This isn't it. She brought it down here to me, but I have my notes in here, and I... Oh, I'm excited about it. Where are we at, Romans? Romans, we're going to go 13, 12 through 14. Night's darkness is dissolving away, and I'm reading now the Passion, as a new day of destiny dawns. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing, the, removing it like filthy clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of the light as our weapon. We must live honorably, surrounded by the light of this new day, not in the darkness and drunkenness and debauchery, not in promiscuity and sensuality, not being argumentative or jealous of others. Instead, fully immerse yourselves into the Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, and don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to wake its selfish desires. That's, that's the process. It tells you exactly what to do there. Now, over in, in uh, Proverbs, and we're not going to read it all, but I am going, I'm going to kind of bounce through it real quick. Uh, this is the one where Pastor actually was talking about on Wednesday, and, and we talked about Thursday morning. It's Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. This is the process of how you change a default. Yes, sir. This is it. I'm about to give you the formula 
that you do to change whatever it is you need to change. All right? Regardless of where you're at, if you come into a church, if you're listening to on TV or radio or wherever it's at, but it's a it, it's good crown, good Christian godly Bible talk. Regardless of what it is, first thing you do, listen carefully and pay attention. Next thing you do, you go home and you let it says unwrap the word. That means you meditate on it and you think about it. What is it that that is saying and how does that apply to me? Now, once you make that, you figure out, you know what, this is how it applies to me. I do this, but I don't need to be doing it. This is what I've got to do. You have now unwrapped that word. And now what you've got it unwrapped and you're out, all right, here's what I've got to do. Now it says, it says in 20, I better put these on, in 23 that now you have to guard your heart. So once you've un unwrapped it and you put it in your heart, it's now, this is what I'm going to do. You've got to guard it. You, why do we got to guard it? Because there's somebody out there that's coming to steal it. He's coming to steal it. So, it says you've got to guard it. And then it says you have to pay attention to your innermost being. For far from there flows the wellspring of life. Pay attention. That means you've got to pay attention to what's happening. And then it goes into avoid dishonest speech. It's funny how it says avoid dishonest speech or perverse words because that's coming out of your mouth. Avoid it. That means you're thinking about it. I don't need to say that. And if you're not going to say it, it's not coming out of your mouth. That means you're not, put, you're not keeping it in your heart. Because yes. what comes out of your mouth is in your heart. Yeah. And then it says, set your, or it says, avoid dishonest speech. Be free from using perverse words. And it, the very last part of that is great. It says, no matter what. No matter what. And then it says, set your gaze on the path before you. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. I've got a word. Now I can take that word and I can look away from it and let, the, let it be stolen. But it's saying right here what we're supposed to do is to set your gaze on the path. That means if I'm going this way, I'm about to set my gaze on this path. I've got this thing in my heart that I've unwrapped. I've already paid attention. I've done that. I'm holding it here. I've got it and I'm about to go this way. It says to watch where you're going. Now, I wrote in my Bible, it says, watch where you're going, not what's going by you. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth, and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness. On your path, being whatever it be that you've been dealing with, and you've got that word, and you're holding it in your heart, and you've said, you know what, this, heart, this word was for me. Yes. You have decided this word is for me. Now, how am I, what do I got to change? Don't let something come out of your mouth that's contrary to what you have here. Yes, yes. Set your gaze and don't let nothing distract you from it. Okay. Nothing distract you from it. Because I'm telling you, there's one out there that's want to come distract it. And he will use anybody including your best friend, including your spouse, to distract you from that word. And they don't even know they're doing it. So I'm going to finish with this. Caleb, would you come here, please? In Romans 13, 14, the very last thing it says in there, it says, don't even waste a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken its selfish desires. Thought. Don't waste a moment's thought. Because if you do, it will open up and awaken that desire, whatever it is that you've changed. Whatever it is that you've changed, that, you're, that you have decided, I'm changing this in my life. That desire, it's saying, if you waste even a moment's thought on that old desire, that it will awaken its selfish desires. Jacob, come here, please. We're going to finish with Jacob praying. 
But we're actually going to finish with one thing other. And what, when, whenever, Jacob's going to pray, and when he says amen, we're going to have one thing happen. And that's over. We're done. Okay? So if everybody please rise to your feet. Jacob, dismiss us, brother. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that came here and that's watching us at home. And God gave us ears to hear this lesson, and this lesson landed on good soil. And we came here expecting, and we left receiving. Amen. Amen.